the guidelines and COVID. Sorry for detracting, but I just had to share that. Um, the most recent surge in coronavirus cases is actually starting to finally decrease in both Marin and the Bay Area. Um, with those drops, however, though, is uh, just the lack of vaccinations and vaccine being provided to the Marin County and or, you know, almost from what I understand, the state. And these shortages aren't just affecting um, us here in California. I've had some conversation with my mother who lives in British Columbia, Canada, and they're experiencing some of the same problems and it's pretty frustrating. It just goes without saying that um, something's missing somewhere. I don't really have a, a full understanding of what the challenges are, but I've read something in the Marin um, IJ today that said 48 million vaccine doses have been released to California, but only 26, uh, 26 million administered, or roughly similar numbers. And I, I just, I, I'm at a loss to understand why that is, but I'm just sharing that information because um, something's not going well, and I hope that there's some correction and some plan to correct quickly, especially when you consider that the president indicated his goal was to have 100 million people vaccinated in 100, his first 100 days. Um, we're not really off to a good start, but hopefully that'll change and get momentum as some people put their really some serious mind and logistics behind this and start moving this in the right direction. Um, the stay at home order was recently lifted as of a week ago and a day ago, uh, eight days ago, and that's, that's huge. It allows uh, restaurants, some more outdoor dining to resume, um, some other consumer operations to reopen where businesses can actually serve some customers in, indoors now, such as nail salons, hair salons, and uh, barbershops. And heard a funny story today about, you know, someone sitting in a barbershop, but then I also heard briefly as I was walking out the door, maybe one of the uh, individuals is playing in the Super Bowl will not be playing in the Super Bowl because he may have gotten COVID at the barbershop. So I just... I didn't really get to, to know whether or not that's actual and factual because I only heard it in passing. But um, as you can see, I don't have that problem. I'm my own barber. So <laughs> hopefully I can uh, <laughs> hopefully I can do something about my son's hair, though. He's got his hair is down to his shoulders now, so we'll see. Um, that being said, um, a lot of changes coming based on being a purple tier. And as being a tier, um, means that us, like many others, still have a lot of restrictions, despite the fact that um, the states moved us to that level. So um, there's so many facilities that will now be able to resume in uh, commerce. And I know that it's going to be a relief to them financially and otherwise. But um, the fact that we've still got so many businesses reopening or are allowed to do commerce, uh, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that we still need to maintain uh, all of the best practices when it comes to protecting ourselves so that we don't still find ourselves impacted. I, I saw something yesterday that spoke to, we were down from 40,000 infections a day in the state of California to roughly half of that, 20,000 infections a day. That is just a astronomical number. And it really puts it into perspective that at any turn, you could almost be faced with coming into contact with somebody who's positive. When you start talking about 40,000 a day, you're looking at 4 million people or excuse me, 400,000 people in 10 days and well over a million people in 30 days. And so it just, it, it puts it on a different scale. But thankfully the, the stay at home order is starting to turn the numbers in the opposite direction. And hopefully combined with vaccinations, we'll be able to see that last surge as the last surge, hopefully. But not to be the purveyor of doom, I did hear about some, uh, or read about some, some new strains that are really problematic and they're concerned that those could really take effect as soon as April and becoming the dominant strain. And some of them are somewhat resistant to some of the other vaccinations outside of Pfizer's. So that's a, a whole nother monster, but we'll see what happens with those variants or those mutations. Um, the, well, I spoke to the, the amount of vaccine not being really optimal. So um, the folks that are actually available for are, are able to receive vaccinations right now are still as of the 26th of January in phase 1A groups, which includes healthcare workers, residents of residential care facilities uh, for the elderly and Marin County residents age 75 and older. Um, I, would, I would have hoped by now we would have been able to move down to the 
residents who are 65 and older and start capturing a greater portion of, of our Marin County residents. But that, from what I understand, that hasn't happened just yet, but maybe it's, it's coming as more vaccination surface. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, I did have some data that I didn't have before on the number of persons who had actually received vaccinations, which um, was nearly 24,000 people had received them. 20,262 plus as of January 25th had received their first vaccination and 3,691 had received both doses. So depending again, I think everyone is aware that if you take the Pfizer vaccine, you have three weeks before you take the second dose. You take the Moderna vaccine, that's four weeks until the second dose. Uh, there's a couple others that are on the horizon, including Johnson & Johnson, um, AstraZeneca, and I can't remember the other name right now, but they um, have varying degrees of effectiveness. Uh, but some of them only require one dose as well. So um, more vaccinations, the better, but I, I like the vaccinations that have 90 plus um, or 94, 95% effectiveness as opposed to 66 or 72% effectiveness. Even with some of the information we're seeing now, these vaccinations and those strains that I was speaking to are mutating. They're finding that different demographics respond differently to the vaccinations. So um, persons of color may have, in some instances with certain vaccines, less resistance um, or that vaccine may not be as effective for them as it may be for others. And so that's a, a concerning development as well. And so they're looking at potentially targeting certain populations right away to keep it from expanding into other populations. So those variants and those strains that I spoke of, they may actually be looking at how can they control that from being an explosive situation and start to provide vaccinations, heavy vaccinations in those areas to kind of keep that strain or that mutation from becoming the dominant strain. And now thereby just almost negating all the value of the, the vaccines that have been administered so far. So. <laughs> I got a question for you, Chief. Yes. Regarding what uh, Pas Pascal brought up, brought up last time, uh, concerning the COVID vaccines, um, I know they have to be kept in a very uh, cold environment and they don't survive as long, but I've heard some, from some friends that they've come to, uh, a few of them have been able to uh, uh, show up at a location, various locations in the Bay Area. After the, the, the vaccines were given, they had some extras and they were able to get uh, they were able to get a shot with, and it all happened within an hour or two. So I'm just wondering if, if in anywhere in, in Marin that that is an, it has been the occasion at all. Um, I can say that I'm aware of it happening early on when we first started rolling out our units to provide vaccinations, um, and so we would get the word that. Um, for whatever reason, there's five more vaccines available. Do you have a crew who's not been vaccinated yet? And if so, can they respond and come and get a vaccine? So I'm aware of that, but I'm not aware of any massive numbers of vaccines that have gone unadministered. And now they're starting to give them to the public. But I wouldn't be surprised because if there's overages and there's not enough individuals there, you want to make sure that you don't waste a vaccine. So it would almost seem to make sense that if you, if you can prioritize those individuals who are still there based on age and other essential criteria, that would make sense that you don't waste a vaccine, at least to me. Um, but I, I don't, I can't speak to that happening on a regular basis. I just know that it happened maybe in the first week or so when we were receiving vaccines and we were providing them to the skilled nursing facilities and to the other first responders. Yeah, and, uh, this was actually in San Francisco, I think last week, somebody was telling me there were getting their shot and they said, oh, we've got some extras. And he called up his friends and he didn't call me. <laughs> wow. Steve, I, uh, I heard the same from my neighbors. Uh, they're in their early yeah. 70s and they were at a CVS, I assume in Marin. And there was a line and a sign up sheet and a whole lot of people got vaccinated that day. Wow. So it seems mm. to be happening and it seemed like there was no particular it's not, I know they're less, they're under 75. So, you know, they're close, but elderly, but under 75. So it, it seems to be happening. This was maybe well, two, three weeks ago. Would, would that have been extra that was unused or was that just, they were actually providing the service to individuals who showed up? I'm not, I'm not really sure. 
all they like said is that it seemed fairly organized in that there was a sign-up sheet and a line, which seems okay. to be more I than, you know, five extra. Showing up. I'm sorry, what was that, Steve? Uh, Steve? Uh, they said that people weren't showing up to their appointments, and, and so they had extra, that's what I heard, that they had extra vaccine because the people that were scheduled to show up that day didn't show up. Hmm. Right. Could be, yeah. yeah. Well, that, Steve? that's great that they're able to get, yeah, at least so they don't waste it. That that's okay. They're not wasting it at least. I, yeah, who's that? Tom? Yeah, this is Tom. I know okay. several people in the neighborhood that showed up at the uh, civic center over at the theater and uh, just uh, stood in line and uh, received their vaccination and uh, you know all over seventy five. So uh, no questions asked. And, and uh, it's happening um, almost every day. Hmm. Wow. Uh, it's great to meet the criteria. They should be able to get the vaccine at 75 and older um, at this point. And again, it's my hope that they start moving that bar downward towards the 65 and older and eventually 55 and 45 and so forth. So for right now, though, um, you know, just administer the vaccinations. I, I think that's that's the huge thing. We're We're taking... And I don't know, and I'm not sure what, what the logistical challenge is, but it seems like we're taking a lot of time to provide vaccinations. And this, this, should, this should be a fairly straightforward thing where, you know, you get notified, you're coming, you get your vaccination, you keep it going. And it's done by age or some other, you know, systematic method. I just, I can't understand why it's continuing to be, you know, the, the challenge it is. It seems like it could be a I know, I'm, I'm, process. I'm a... Uh... Well, over 75, I'm 78 and uh, I'm having a difficult time. So I'm just uh, standing uh, and, and waiting my turn.